Hi, I'm Tessa from Tales from Outside the Classroom, and today I'm going to show you how I use PowerPoint to time, manage, and signal my small group and center's rotation. So I'm starting out with just a standard uh, PowerPoint file. I'm going to go ahead and click to delete these two set up text boxes, and then I'm going to change my slide size to be a standard size, size instead of widescreen because I don't have anything there. I'm just going to click maximize, and now I have a blank template that I'm ready to use. So I'm going to start by inserting a picture that's going to be my background. So I'm going to just click this device because I am using my center's rotation display system uh, for all of the images in this file. You certainly don't have to and are able Able to use whatever images that you have. I'm going to come over to the backgrounds and I am going to keep things pretty simple um, with just a pink rainbow background um, because I am using one file to manage all of my rotations. I'm not doing this by specific days of the week. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a text box and I'm going to label this as rotation one. And I'm going to make it nice and big and bold so it is easily seen. And I'm going to use just a strong font that I like to use. Make it a little bit bigger and then eyeball it so it's centered um, so that I am ready. And that looks pretty good. And now I am ready to insert my images. Now, if uh, you don't have images you're working with, now might be when you come in and insert your table. And so you might do three or four rows, depending on the number of small groups that you have. Then um, maybe you have a second column for your student names and a third column for the rotation. Maybe you keep their group titles and their names in one. And then just the second one for the rotation that is up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and insert pictures so that I can insert my group names. And so I'm going to come over to group titles. This year I'm using letters. So I'm going to go ahead and insert those letters. And I'm going to do four rotations and insert them. Then I'm also going to come in and insert a blank one because I'm going to use that blank one for my student names. So see that it's just blank. And then I'm going to insert at the same time my four centers. It just makes uh, resizing things a little bit easier. You can always come in and do that later. So I'm going to choose what um, the four options I have for students right now are. So I'm going to do partner reading with teacher writing and word work. I'm going to go ahead and insert them. And then I am going to just click to select all of them and resize them a bit. That looks pretty good. And then these ones I see that are those rotations. I'm going to just kind of move them over. I'm going to go ahead and put group D all the way on the bottom. And then B and C, I'm going to just sort of... Um, lay there and then put A. So I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. I'm going to click and drag to select all four of those images in one swoop. I'm going to click arrange and then PowerPoint has this great tool where I can align them together. So I'm going to align them on the left just to keep them kind of um, off to the side a bit and then I'm going to go back to that align and distribute vertically and this puts them equidistant from each other. So I am going to come over and line that one up. I'm going to insert a text box so I can put my student names there. And I'm going to briefly add their names. Change a font. Um, change the size and then add them. I'm ready. So I could, of course, make these bigger and bolder if I wanted. I can center them. I'm going to click and select that shape behind it, select that. I'm gonna go ahead and group that together. And then I'm gonna duplicate that and line it up briefly. And with each one so that I can change out those names.
then I am going to line the centers up with them eyeballed. I probably could um, have done that a bit differently. And then anyway, selecting all nine of them with one swoop. And then I'm going to go ahead and just group them together. And I'm going to, as a group, align them to the middle of the page. They are lined up evenly enough. Um, if I wanted them to be aligned a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and ungroup them and show you what I mean. Um, select them again. Go to arrange. I just did one column and I'm arranging the selected objects vertically. And then that lines them up just as A and D were. And I can do the same thing here um, in that middle. And that looks pretty good. Um, and so I have my first rotation set up. So before I duplicate it, I'm going to come over here to transitions and I'm going to turn off mouse click and turn it on to rotate on its own after 20 minutes. So this has it set up ready to go. I'm also going to turn on a sound here um, so that it identifies when that 20 minutes is up. Now I am ready to come over and duplicate the slide to super quickly make it ready for rotation two. Now um, you might have your students rotate through one by one. And so if so, it's super qu quick and easy to just sort of visually line that up underneath, select all of them, and then line things back up together and it is ready to go. Now, um, it's not perfectly precise. I can again use the align tool, but this is good enough for me. And then I am ready to do the same thing with that third rotation. So just moving that one image underneath, selecting all of them by using the control key and then dragging them up. And again, I can choose to align them a little bit better if I need them neater. So here I have my three set up ready to go. Let's say I want to add in a slide in between them for cleaning up before that rotation starts. So um, I might build a one minute cleanup in between. So I'm gonna click and add a text box and just type cleanup. Select that text box and choose a nice big and bold font and make it nice and large. I'm going to center it. And again, I'm going to use that align tool to center it um, on the slide in the middle and center and it's ready to go. So I'm going to do the same thing here and after. Um, oops, I didn't set up my transition. So I want that to be a one minute cleanup. So coming in and adding that with again, a different type of, um, sound. Um, and so since I, I can come through and man manually do that here or just duplicate that slide again, I'll just take the quick second to change it and then come here and duplicate and add this and then I am ready to go for my day's rotations in just about 10 minutes or so. So it doesn't take very long at all once you've set it up the first time. Um, another option is adding a timer so students can see how much time they have remaining. For some students this is sometimes a distraction because they're super eager to watch the countdown. For other students though it helps hold them accountable um, and they appreciate that visual reminder. So um, it's up to you whether or not you use them. I am going to come in and insert a video. I include timers in my center's PowerPoint file. Um, so you are welcome to use those if that's something you have purchased. If not, um, I also have video timers available in my TPT store, or you can just click online videos and you can borrow some from YouTube. There are many different options on YouTube with different sounds. Um, there are different backgrounds included, that type of thing. But I'm going to go ahead and just um, click to use mine. I'm going to click from this device. And I'm going to use a 20-minute timer here. So I'm going to click to insert it. 
Um, it takes just a minute to get it ready and inserted. And I'm going to click to make it a bit smaller and include it here. Um, because it's on the side here, you might choose to then um, move all of these again. Um, so again, it's super quick to do that by just clicking, holding, and dragging over it. And notice because I didn't select all of this text box or all of the video, that wasn't included. So I can just move these off to the side a bit so that I can make my timer a little bit larger and easier to see. Um, so I have that there. I can visually change it just a little bit. I can add a border. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, a little black border on it. Um, I'm going to add a little shadow so it sets off the page. I like that middle one. And then I can even change the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and click the oval. Um, and it changes to an oval for me. And then it's ready and displayed here. So just as I did with the slide transitions, I can set up that playback to be automatic. So when this slide is displayed, it automatically begins counting down on that 20 minutes, which is great. Um, now, my slide transition is also set up to 20 minutes. So in theory, these would happen at the exact same time. Unfortunately, sometimes the slide timings are a second or two off. So maybe you decide to change this to 20 minute, 10 seconds to build in just a little bit of time here. Um, once that is set up with the way you like it, if you have already made your slides just as I have here, I can super easy copy and paste this on the other one. So I am going to choose control C to copy, and then I'm gonna to go to rotation two and paste and rotation three and paste. And again, um, because of that placement, I can come in and easily choose just those images and move them off to the side and then do the same thing down here. So it's not too hard to adjust once I can select all of them pretty quickly and I am good to go there. So let's say I want the same thing for that cleanup slide. So I can insert that video and choose a much shorter video. Let's say one minute cleanup. Um, and again, I can make that smaller. Um, I can change the shape just to make it a little bit interesting. I'm going to go ahead and pick a star. Um, you can't see it right now because there's no border. So I'm going to add a little bit of a border. Um, and again, a shadow. And I am going to change the way this looks just a bit. I'm going to stretch that out just a bit and then change this and I am ready to go. So because I centered that, maybe I decide to move that up. Oops move that up on the page a bit and then I can move this in the middle and again I can copy and paste it I can keep it off to the side um, whatever I would like now same thing that one minute on that slide transition so I might choose to make this um, one minute and four seconds just to give it a little bit of time to time it in signal on the end here so in uh, just a few minutes, uh, less than 15, I can set up a center's rotation system that does all the work for me, which I absolutely love because I can click to launch, start my rotations, and then I am good to go. Now, if you are someone like me who often has to have different rotations per different days of the week, uh, which is why I ended up coming up with my center's management system, um, you can also quickly and easily use this um, to change throughout the week. So once I save this, um, this might be my Monday file, and then I can come back through and um, change out the images that I need. If I have these as images, I can just click and click change and trade out what uh, students are doing at that time so that I could have a different file per, um, per day. If you don't need to have different slides per rotation, then you might choose to set up your PowerPoint with one slide image, basically what you see on the screen, one slide per day, and then you just click to different days of the week. Um, my need for that is actually how I created the system. Um, 
because I, every day of the week, had to have a different rotation due to class number and need. So either way, it is super quick and easy to make this work for you. It does take a little bit of work on getting things set up the first time, but what I love is it's so easy and quick to change things out throughout the year. It's so very easy in my morning because I don't have to change out cards each day like I originally had been doing. And then once I have it set up, in future years, it doesn't take me long to update it the first time so it's ready to go. So I hope this helps you get started with using PowerPoint to help manage your rotations. Good luck.